one. You know. Oh, 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 I have to say. Oh, go on, go on, he's coming, he's um, coming. Derek, Derek went as in his powers this week. And, oh, not, um, not Derek the Pufter. You, you went oh. on a walk all around, and of course he did go to the castle, well, the Iron Age fort. Um, ah, right, so he didn't go to the castle. The Iron Age fort, and uh, he... It's not an Iron he Age fort at all. He went to a big house there. And ah, right. I thought, well, it was outside, you know, it was outside the area, but it was a big, great big house and yeah. um, it's owned by some woman and um, it's the 1930s, I think, or, or I mean, might be earlier than that. But, uh, you know, I keep seeing this sort of gatehouse thing on, on the hill in, in Barry. And I don't know what it is. It's white. Are you, t- are you talking about the dovecote? Talking about the what? The dovecote yeah. in Caniston. No, it's not white. All right, I just it might be if you if you blink your eyes. Well, I'm sure it was on this on this program, but I'm very I must have a look at the map. I must have a look. At yeah. The map. Okay. And when you've got some more details, let us know. Right. Okay. Next, <laughs> uh, Peter. No, nothing with me. Right, Richard. Anything from you, darling? No, nothing. Nothing okay. exciting. There's nothing, an old nothing. school painted white in Caddickston. Uh, yeah. Is that the one? They were around Caddickston. Uh, well, well, the old you... school is a, 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 a bungalow painted white at the bottom of uh, Church Road. That That's was it. the old school. That's, That's what I'm thinking of. Is it a bit sort of castellated? No. 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 Oh, this no, is like no. almost castellated, like it's um, you know, it's not it's not ancient, but it's it's uh, you know, thirties. I would think we can, you know, Victorian maybe. 30s. So pretentious then. Yes, <laughs> pretentious looking. <laughs> okay, okay, right. Well, okay, we'll My do that again. was built in the thirties. That doesn't look pretentious at all. <laughs> no. Can I just? Oh no, I know. Just, and get off this subject, right? Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've lost interest, right? Um, Richard, anything you want to tell us? No, you've asked me, you Eds. I got nothing. No, 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 nothing like lion taming or anything like that. No. Oh, okay then. And, We've and been Kate, councils. Any- That's the only thing I've come across <laughs> this week. What? Weeping chancels. Weeping chancels? No, it's <laughs> Ew. Yeah, it's Ew. where they put, so the, in a church where the nave and the chancel is a slight an angle to the nave. Oh, right. That, 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 is got, at an angle. i got to be honest with you, that sounds very odd. It's down to um, location, where it's been located to the east. Right. Okay, we'll have to see a plan of that, uh, Rich. There's quite a lot of them about. Okay, well, if you can get a plan of it, we'll, we'll have a little look. Yeah. Uh, right, I... Um, strange. Well, lo- lots, of thing- lots of things that we do are strange, you know. I- I- I'm strange. <laughs> anyway, the, nobody's did, arguing with you there. Did, did, you, did you notice there was no comment then? Uh, it took you a while to catch up. <laughs> right, okay. Um, we, we're all we're all we're all running we're all running wondering on online now. So so everything's ready to go. Um, last week's walk, I do believe, was a was a success. Except the person running running it kept going off talking to people. Um, it, yeah. it, it was quite. It was quite an interesting walk last week. There was Richard. There was Melanie. There was Kate. There was Anne. Uh, there was Rosamond. Then um, we were joined by uh, Paul, um, who was leading another walk in the morning. And uh, um, and then 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 I then I started talking to lots of people on the way and everybody going off. And there was Gareth, Anne's best friend. We had a chat yeah. with him. So it, it was kind of Glenn. Glenn was listening in the distance with uh, people of the West End Labour Club. There was my two little groupies, a guy trying to get me to uh, join a running group, and at the end we all had a cup of tea and some biscuits. 
Yeah, it was really good. On that note, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna we're gonna get on, right? So, um, Kate, you were missed, uh, but it was your loss. Yes. <laughs> Although we did. Yes, I was amazed that that man came around with us. I don't know how he kept going, but he is a marathon runner. Oh That's yes. That. <laughs> oh no, you no, know, you're getting no. the marathon runner mixed up with Paul. The, the, yeah, but the, uh, Paul, Paul. Yeah, and, and right, let's crack on. Right, okay. Um now what what we've got we've got a couple of images this week from um uh from Ruth who went out all by herself to take the photographs. I'm only kidding her from Kate. These these two images are from Kate. So um mm -hmm. so I, I decided this week to to look at um Lavernock Church and Hopefully it's going to be published in the uh, Baron District. And when I was going through my Lavernock Church file, um, I had so much stuff. I, st I started to look at the article in the Baron District and I thought, right, hang on a minute, I can't do much more than this. And there was two there was two bits of my article in the Baron District that I didn't put in. And there's a little fact in the Baron District that is wrong deliberately. And the fact is that uh, I said that there's no evidence of an early church at Lavernock, even though we know an early church existed there. There is evidence, but I didn't want to put that in the article because it just confused things. Back in the 1960s, two inscribed stones were actually found, which date back to the early church, medieval church. Didn't put that in deliberately because it, it would have just made the art. I, I've been warned <laughs> with the Baron District, I'm only allowed to use 400 words, so I didn't want to use another 300. Um, so what what, I, what I'd like to do is, is, is start off with um, trying to understand Lavernock Church um, with the information that I've got here. Lavernock Church is most famous for uh, the Marconi um, uh, work that was undertaken here. Mm -hmm. Also, Lavernock, uh, the landscape of Lavernock is known for erosion and uh, dinosaur bones. Lavernock is also known for its Second World War base, but not really known for a base that was established there in the Victorian period. That's that's which might actually be the same date as the, as the Palmerston uh, folly um, uh, fortifications on Flatton, which is something that we're not really going to go into too detail, but it's useful for Peter to know that as well. We, we probably already knew that anyway. So what, one of the things that we think about Lavernock Church is the church that we're seeing in front of us is nothing. The medieval stuff from it's gone. There's, there's nothing medieval fabric there at all. And actually, what I'm going to do is say what I didn't say in the article as well, um, in the Baron District, which, which was actually exactly what all the references in this work in front of me said. When you go to Lavernock Church, um, you're looking at the church and thinking, there's something missing, i.e. all the history, right? You go to Lavernock Church thinking, thinking, oh, wow, what an interesting place. And then suddenly thinking, where's all the old stuff? And every author that goes to Lavernock Church says exactly the same thing, um, in including um, a certain founder of Clyde Cymru. But we've got a poem from him as well. So what I'd like to do is, as we're looking at the church graveyard, let's look at some gravestones. Now, that's one thing that we mentioned yesterday. Not, not last today, last week, when we actually visited St. Nicholas Church. We talked about the gravestones, and this is rather interesting that most of the gravestones are similarly in date to the gravestones that I've got in front of me. In other words, what we're talking about with St. Nicholas Church in Barry is that the, the changes at St. Nicholas Church in Barry in 1876 were so wide ranging that much of the early history and archaeology at St. Nicholas Church, like Lavernock Church, disappeared. Right, but. We're not going to surmise. We're going to do what we've got. So what I'd like to do is I'd, I'd like to basically, we've got some images. Oh, these these are the sketches. They're not mine, by the way, of some some of the stonework that was actually found at Lavernock Church in the 1960s, which, which isn't covered in my article in the Baron District. There's Marconi and Kemp. And this is a nice little list. And, and we're, we also talk about the meaning. The meaning. Of, of, of Lavernock Church. And whoever's got me on speaker, can you um, put your speaker, please? Right, so tombstone um, inscriptions in the churchyard of the Church of St. Lawrence. 
otherwise known as St. Lawrence. And these date to, as you've got there, the 19th of um, October, 1979. So not much has been added to it since then. So what we've got is the dates. So that's 1899. Now, we're not going to go through all of these. The name Baker um, stands out there. And if you go through these, uh, you, you, talk, you say 1906, 1900. The, one of the oldest graves in the church graveyard is the 20th of the 7th, 1828, 67 of Lavenock. Now, it's interesting when you look at this list where these people came from. Uh, George Clement died in 1900, Oxford, but obviously David Thomas. Um, and you've got uh, made probably his son, another David Thomas, uh, passes away um, in 1892. Now, a name that really stands out when you talk about Sully and that area is the name Greatrix. There's a few Greatrixes in, in, in Caddockston, and it's a really old name. In fact, I think, I think one of the ladies that used to come to our Barry class um, was related to a great tricks, which would have been one of the original families that that was actually in Barry Caddockston, I think it was. I think that's a bit vague, but the name the name Great mm. Tricks is a very local name. So yeah. 1873, um, you've got uh, Richard Great Tricks, obviously 1901. So this name Great Tricks. Look at the amount of Great Tricks is on there, and you've got mm. the name Hawker. That's an interesting name as well locally. So when when you look at these dates, you know you've got um, you've got the links there wife of Richard, um, you've got these these 1875 dates for Richard Greatrix, um, the, the first you, you could say, and, and there we go. Um, and you've got um, 1898, drowned. That's quite, I, that's quite, that's not really ironic, is it, when you think about the coast? No. But um, there you go, 1894, um, there you go, um, uh, you've got, um, Son of um, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, that's right, Ezekiel and Mary Greatrix. So you've got 1894. So um, three and a half years old yeah, and okay. very interesting that there. You've got a very, very, um, <laughs> you've got a variety of, of, of details here. There's a, there's a rather interesting one. Jacob Greatrix accidentally killed a Panath Dock. Oh. Whatever death that was, but mm -hmm. interesting bit of information. Another another family, the Hawkins, or you could say, I think this is the same for the Hawker family. Um, there, there, there you go. Uh, you also go back to um, 1826, um, 1828. Again, one of the earlier graves, 1826, um, um, 1828, and of Lavenock as well. Um, as, you, as you go down, you've got some Hopkins there. And that's sort of another local name, I believe, Hopkins. Um, you've got um, um, Margaret Lowry. Lowry, Lowry. Lowry, 10 months, 1840. Yeah. Robert Lowry, 1843. Yeah. So obviously um, you could basically say that Margaret must have been the daughter of, 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 of Robert mm -hmm. um, and Elizabeth, maybe. Yeah. We'll put that link in there. Um, there, there we go. Um, this is interesting. Charles Octavius Parsons, Lieutenant Colonel. Now, the question is, was he based locally? That's interesting. Was he associated with the base? 1924. Don't know. Maybe retired. Go, um, retired Perhaps. in the area. We don't know. There we go. Um, well, he would have been retired at 61. So, uh, Rich, um, James Richards, James okay. Richards, native of Cardigan. 1885, Dated Native Cardigan. Cardigan died at Cardiff, dock, uh, docks on board the SS uh, Crindai. Crindai. Uh, Crindai. 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 That's rather interesting. How did he die on board the ship? And that's an interesting question. Peter, this is where Peter comes in. Could he have died of plague or cholera? Mm. Mm. That'd be an interesting one bit of research. He died on board mm. on board a ship. Why? You don't often die on board a ship. That's an interesting one. Mm. Um, so you, we, we've got a few others here, Smiths and Thomases. And I, I thought that was a, just an interesting look at gravestones. Yes, um, to give you a little bit of an just give you a little bit of an idea there. So what I, what I'd like to do next is I, I would like to, because we've got quite a bit to go through. Um, 
it, 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 it would be to sort of give us a little bit of an overview. And, and one of the things, I, I know I've got it sort of side on. Uh, I might actually edit this image. Hang on a minute. Let's sort of edit. Hang on. Let's edit to sort of get a level. Um, and hang on. Edit. Hang on. I'm going to try and edit this one. Hang on a minute. Let's get this on. There we go. Hopefully I can edit it. Is it we, right, we can edit it. And there we go. Nice. Um, and we'll save that. Good. So basically, one of the things I said in the one of the things I said in the article in the newspaper was that of the original village of Lavenock, nothing of the early period of Lavenock survives, not even the church. And you could say the same about Lavenock Farm as well, which is um, which there it is next door. Um, so what what we one one point to be made about the farm is 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 the point to be made about the whole landscape. Um, is is the farm once stood with more oh, land yeah, between yeah, it and the yeah. sea yes much erosion has taken place at Lavenock in that. more recent times as well perhaps in early times when Lavenock point projected more into the channel there was a bay alongside it called Rani Bay uh, which was a northern sheltered bay which would have offered its own harbour now that's important yeah. having a village by the coast with its own harbour is is yeah. is a very important um sort of ge geographical feature um and so much of what we know about the coastline is lost and and lavanoc itself um, may have been referred to um amongst other names which will come on to as rani point rani is a spit of land rani harbor rani point um and this is this is another name for the locality so what I'd, what I'd like to what I'd like to think is sort of flow into this and sort of give you another little bit of an overview. Um, and what what we what we again this nice and black, um, black and white image of the church. Although a, a Penartharians Penartharians accept that Lavanoch is part of Penarth, it has never been actually within the town's boundaries. So there we go, Penartharians, it's completely separate. Ecclesiastical, the Anglican Paris of Lavenock, um, um, the Anglican Paris Ecclesiastical has always been with Penarth, except politically it's never been with Penarth. So there we go, it's not contaminous. Um, so so one, of, one of the things that we do know, it was at Thomas Williams's farm, um, and there we go, Thomas Williams's farm um, near the church at Lavanoff Point that Marconi made his base for his radio experiments in 1897. Um, and let, let's sort of get, get the little, let, guess, let's get the little gang up there. There they are. Uh, Cardiff Post Office Engineer George Kemp helped um, uh, Marconi and the and the two men stayed at Lavenock Farm making journeys to Fatome to set up their app appara apparatus. I'm interested to say they must have just gone off from St. Mary's Well Bay or maybe what was left of Rani Harbour uh, just near um, our farm. Marconi's um, trans transmitted a radio signal across water for the first time on the 11th of May 1897 using kite aerials on Flatome and at Lavenock Point. Now there's a there's a question I want to ask Peter on that, and it's not a, it's not a trick question, but I think I think I've got this wrong myself. But we'll we'll, we'll go on to that in a short while, Peter. So get your mic ready. Um, Blanche Vaughan, sister of the sexton at the church and and parish clerk at Saint Augustine's Church, was in service at Lavenock Farm, and she and Mrs. Williams sat and sewed and watched the hand of the Galvan Galvanometer um, on the historic day in May 1897 move. This was connected to a Morse inca, which is in front of us, which um, marked the dots and dashes on a tape. Uh, it's actually a tape. It's a, just a um, little bit of a tape that came out, paper tape. Later, an audible method of receiving signals was later devised. Um, it is not clear why Marconi chose our area for his experiments. Well, it is actually because the Italian government just dismissed his plans completely. Um, it's likely that he was invited uh, with the affection that he had with George Kemp, Kemp to come to Wales as the appropriate location for this <laughs> first broadcast. I don't want to do any more about this at all, because we did this when we looked at Flatow. But one of the questions I would like to ask Peter 
right? Is, can you describe what a, um, in the words, what a kite aerial is? Because I actually thought it was an, a long aerial um, on a, um, a, a wooden mast. I, I got that wrong, obviously. What's a kite aerial, Peter? Do you know or have, have you got this? Yes, um, yeah, they use the kite to raise the, uh, raise the um, wire aerial as to such a height that it could be uh, received I, at Glavenock and at uh, Platoon. Oh. Uh, uh, excuse my ignorance, Peter. Is this actually a kite? Yes. The, well, a kite was used, yes. And attached but, to the kite was a wire, which was then the aerial. Mm. Can, can, I, can I ask you a really stupid question, Pete, right? Um, you've, been with, you've been with me down to uh, um, Land's End, right? And, and we saw we saw the station, and those cables were really thick, right? Yeah. So, how thick was this wire? Must have been like um, must have been the 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 diameter to be able to be carried by a kite of 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 a sewing strand, because it it's not going to go up in the air otherwise, is it? Yeah. Well, a good kite will take it up. Yes, it will. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I I would have thought that. It's a different mechanism because uh, an aerial is an aerial. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're the, so this is and why you're, we're going you're thinking of a, 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 a rod aerial, right, not so a rod yeah, aerial. It's a wire aerial. About a kite. We I'm used wire about. aerials at sea. Right. I, when I was at sea, I had my own little radio at sea, and to uh, receive a signal, I had to put a a, a wire. Up onto the 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 uh, to the master somewhere high, yeah. So I could right. actually uh, receive the signal. Right, and that is was just a, a piece of wire. Is is this a flexible piece of wire, or yes. is this a yeah. Piece of flexible? Wire. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm trying to think like like the tiny wire that goes from your charger to your phone or something. You know, oh, it, right. So, so it's not a rigid. Or, piece of or wire. comes it's out the back of your stereo. Of Right, so it's a flexible piece of wire rather than a rigid piece of wire. Yes, yeah. absolutely, yes. Right, okay, okay, that's what we wanted to guess. That's what me and Anne were getting at. Right, so um, anyway, ded thanks, Pete. Dedication of the Marconi Memorial on the wall of St. Lawrence Churchyard, uh, and there, there it is. It's erected in 1947. So this, 1947, would be the... Um, let me get my uh, let me get my math. It's the 60th anniversary. No, it would be the 50th anniversary, wouldn't it? Because this is this is 1897, May 1897, um, and this is the 50th anniversary in 1947. There's my maths. I'm glad I got my maths correct there. Now, um, um, away from Marconi. Now we've got, we've got to go into the history and archaeology, and there's lots to be said about it. Now the problem is with this uh, with the people who've written about. Um, Lavenot Church. It, it is not really clear when Lavenot Church was actually rebuilt. Um, the, the, one writer says 1841. I've said the 1840s in my article because one historian gives a different date. So it's rebuilt in the 1840s. That's really interesting because Cogan Hall is being rebuilt in the um, 1880s. Um, but it's only been partly rebuilt on top of the original foundations. This is being completely rebuilt, like St. Nicholas Church in Barry, right? But this is similar to Cogan Hall Farm, St. Peter's. But where Cogan Hall Farm differs is that it's not, uh, the original is not completely demolished. This is. But this is in the 1840s. Now, we do have a little bit of a history about the farm here, but we're not going to do that. Um, but what we are going to do, uh, we're going to go directly on to somebody who none of you will have ever heard of, Saunders Lewis. Oh, I've heard of him. I've heard of him as well. <laughs> the, one, of, one of the founders for Plaid Cymru. All uh, right. So... He's a poet. He was a poet, yes. Um, the history of... I think that is really Saunders Lewis, isn't it? That is the same guy. Yeah. Right. The history of Lavenock is baffling in its obscurity, wrote Saunders Lewis. That's exactly what I said when I went there without even looking at any of this. Those words written in 1964 are as true as they are in 2023, as they are in 1987, in any age. Lavenock promises so much, but reveals so little. 
bloody hell so right you know what <laughs> um i i whenever i've been there i've been lost right it's like it's like I go to open my mouth and very little comes out, which is quite unusual. It's like, right, here's the church. You go around it. You look at the gravestones and you leave. That's it. Now, I, I'm not embarrassed to say that because wiser men than me have said the same thing. So I'm happy with that, Saunders Lewis. Saunders Lewis, who spent his retirement in Penarth, expressed this feeling in his poem, Lava Knock. Now, the word lark in this poem is very important when you think about the name Lava Knock. Right. But don't even try and translate that yet because you, you will not get it. Saunders Lewis writes the following. More land and sea, the song of the lark. Ascending through the freedom of air. And we standing listening as we listened before. What remains, what riches? After our journey's dismays, more land and sea, the song of a lark descending through the freedom of the air. And I actually think that there's there's two main major elements there. Listening, freedom of air. I think that might be related to Marconi and the word lark is related to the name. And the word disappointment is related to what I feel. So we've got there's lots more elements there and more land and stuff and, and loss and missing. But those are three elements that I get from that. We, what we should do is we should actually do the archaeology of poems one day. And actually, that leads me on to one other point. Um, on a Monday evening, um, we have we are now going to have at the end of the month throughout um, July, um, it's just a five. Um, it's just a five evening course. It's going to be no more than that. It's thirty pounds, um, and Pat's Pat's going to be there. Um, there's going to be Lawrence, who's a bit nuts like me. There's going to be um, th uh, there's going to be um, a couple of other people um, whose names pass me at this minute. Um, but um, and Melanie might join us as well. Um, so so that might be good. Melanie online. So that might be a fifth person. Um, and I don't know if Kate said she, she was interested, but that's going to be a on a Monday. So if anyone's interested, and the reason why I mention, mention that at the end, ask me at the end, um, yo, for detail, seven o'clock on Mondays at the, the end of the month, four or five sessions. Ask me at the end. The reason why I'm mentioning that is that we will be doing the archaeology and history in one session for an hour, looking at the archaeology of myths and legends. So there we go. I thought that was appropriate. So anyone interested, again, keep it to the end and ask me, tell me that you're interested then. Right. So back to this. Now, this is a rather interesting thing that I don't get. Right. So let's change. Let's just change. Look at that image a moment. The center of vague legends of battle and wrecking, which we know about the wrecking battle, battle. Where's that coming to this? The site is the promise of antiquity, but the present building contains few clues to its past. David Jones of Wallington visited Lavernock on the 30th of September, 1888. And the same feeling of frustration comes through his description of the church. That's, that's three of us so far. That's three of us. Damn, we're so right in this. Um, this, is, this is what our friend in 1888 writes about the church. Um, and when you go inside, it looks really sort of medieval, but it's not. So the 30th of September, 1888, David Jones. Here we go. Oh, let's look at another image. Thank you um, to our wonderful Kate. There we go again. This seems to have been carefully rebuilt upon old lines and features, probably, but was restored some 20 years ago and is a thoroughly neat and perfectly uninteresting building. Oh, great. I've really filled me with awe. <laughs> Nave with slim western bell turret a small south porch, cancel with priest door on south side, old small churchyard ditto, not a single old inscription to be discovered. Oh my God, I'm watched with awe now. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's really pushed me to the edge now. I feel, I feel like jumping off a step somewhere. Where um, is this? What? This is Lavanoff oh. Church. Oh, you, oh, by the way, we didn't, we didn't actually in the introduction tell you where the hell this is. Lavernock Church is as your um as you go Pete. That that's just too easy for um Anne. We've got, yeah. we've got to be a bit more realistic now. Let's yeah. just sort of uh, 
Um, where 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 Lavanoc is, it, it's it's um, you go towards Cosmaston, um, on the on the south road uh, through Sully Cosmaston, and as you sort of see some buildings on the left for Cosmaston, there's a road that says Fort Road, um, going off on the right. You go down Fort Road, Fort Road, and you keep going until you get to the sea, and on the left you've got the church. So that's where it is, Peter. Oh right, okay. And Edlin between Sully and Penarth. Exactly. Yeah. What what yes. it's, it's, it's a it's a right turn in be, uh, between um, between uh, Cosmeston, Pete, and and Penarth because before that there's another turn into St Mary's Well Bay, Pete. Love. That's right. That's uh, the wrong turning. Turn out to uh, Port, on Fort Road. Fort Road. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Port, Port Road or Fort. 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 Right. Move me on. <laughs> Shut up. Um, but don't be dismayed by these descriptions because the whole point of doing history and archaeology is to try and try and get a grip of the lack of landscape and try to bring the landscape to us. Archaeology is about pulling history to us rather than us just thinking that's all that's there. This is this is what I say when you go to castles. Never read any of the signs when you go to castles. Just enjoy the castle and the experience. See what you want to see rather than, oh, this is a kitchen. Next. Oh, that was boring. Um, go into that building that's a kitchen and, and try and see what's there. And in a way, in a way, ignoring these descriptions um, and trying to see what's there is more interesting. And you, you get a feel. And when you're looking at the gravestones, you, 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 get the, you now start to feel that if you've, got lot, if you've got lots of gravestones there from the 1800s, there's 28 actually. Some into the 1900s. Um, well, 20 from the 1800s, about that. I don't know. Um, obviously, people lived in the area and, and it, it was home to people. You know, that's an important fact. So that's not a missing fact. That's an important fact. And being a home to people, they had origins and their ancestors lived there. Another fact, farmhouse. Why is the farmhouse there? It must have had more land. Facts are starting to come to us. So Saunders Lewis and I are wrong. There is more than meets the eye if you start looking under the surface. And that's what we're going to do uh, before the end. In fact, the restoration took place more than 30 years earlier. Um, so from that point, so sometime in the 1840s. Um, so what we learned from 1852, um, this was in a handwritten notice um, that survives about the church at St. Lawrence. A vestry in the porch of the parish church of Lavenock for the purpose of making a rate for the necessary repair, painting, colouring and varnishing of the said church for two new gates and repair of the fences dated this day, the 16th day of September 1858. So some want of money is to be used for restoring the church only years after it was rebuilt. Mm. That's interesting. Who is going to pay for this restoration of the church if it wasn't for a population? That's an interesting point. An interesting point of church being rebuilt because people wanted to rebuild it because people mm. still lived within the area that was from an earlier population that loved this area. Gravestones. Like later historians, David Jones had tried to glean more information by questioning the local people. Um, and this, our, our friend, again, remember David Jones is writing in 1888. One lady told him that the church had looked much the same when she came to Lavenock 20 years previous. So this note is taken 1868, but about seven years after she came here, um, and an old lady drove up in her carriage, gave her name as Mrs. Langley, and said that she remembered the old church in its semi-ruinous condition, and that she had attended worship there in a semi-ruinous condition. So in other words, there had been an earlier church. That's a fact. So this guy, David Jones, is actually writing from local information. Now, Pete, um, Richard will tell you that exactly the same events occurred at Hogan Hall Church at St. Peter's when the church was in a ruinous state in around this same time, the 1830s, 1840s or whatever this is referring to. Uh, people were worshipping in a ruinous church there. So 
even though churches were in a ruinous state, it doesn't mean to say that people weren't going there to worship because they were. That's two instances locally. There just wasn't enough money to keep to keep these churches going until this church was rebuilt and the money used to rechurch, uh, rebuild St. Peter's Church because of the Marquis of Butte. But that's another story again. Let's just leave that one. Let's go back to Lavenock. Just how ruinous was that condition is revealed by a series of quarterly returns submit submitted by the church wardens for the chancellors and archdeacons visitations each year from about 1726 to 1826. Mm. So that's the point. These date to 1826. So there was a church that predates a church here in the 1840s. Mm. That's another, another fact. fact. They mention repairs to a west window. Lavanoff has no window to the west wall today. <laughs> Like so, uh, so in other words, the earlier church had a west window, and the window by the pulpit, and that one wall actually collapsed. Not good. One, 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 one second. Can everybody just bear with me a minute? I just got a call. Come on, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Stay there. Hello. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm teaching. Went to all the school. Yeah, I have been that far. Then it's very similar to you know most of others. But... Is it Saint Lawrence Church then? Yeah. yeah. All right. You can't think of um, anywhere I'm talking about that's uh, white and sort of castellated. Surrounded by houses, so it's, it must be. Right, sorry about that. Folks. I had to take oh. that. Right, carry on. Let's work. Let's get that back is. to where we were. Right, okay. So um, let's get back to where we were with the church. We've got, we've got to get this back on. Hang on a minute. Um, and image. Right, let's go back to this. Um, so back to the semi-ruined estate. Now this is rather interesting. So we're talking about we're talking about a church that sometime before uh, the eight, 1820s was in a really bad state. Now, here we go. We have a glimpse of that earlier decaying church in some notes of Edward Williams, who visited Lavanock on the 26th of April, 1780. For you guys watching, and for anyone else watching on YouTube, Edward Williams is described as a charlatan, a fake, a person who made up history, right? He's not. He's a guy who's given us history that nobody else wrote down. So thank you very much, Edward Williams, for visiting the church at Yolo Mar um, on the 26th of April, 1780. He described, now this is what, we got so few descriptions of the earlier church, that thanks to Edward Williams, we've got this. He's not a charlatan at all. He yeah. describes the church as simple, much decayed, seems ancient, circular arches, windows and bell arch, chamfered windows, uh, and it's it's rude weathering. In other words, the, the the window cases have been weathered. Now, away from Yola Margono, the circular arches which he describes would indicate that they were of Norman work in a church similar in size and appearance to St. Peter's old Hogan, which has an old arch. But all that remains of it are some carved stones and, and the bell, which is inscribed with the date 1747, um, according to Yolo Morganog, and the name of the makers, Baileys of Bridgewater. So we've got a bell, a very small bell, and the bell itself is basically, um, you, you know, um, if you think of a, a bowl in the shape of a bell, a kitchen bowl, it's a small bell that would have been placed um, in an early uh, bell coat. Uh, mm -hmm. which may have been like that. We don't know. Uh, we don't know where the bell coat was, but it was a little bell there. The church does, in fact, contain one inscription, perhaps not old by David Jones's standards, to mark the burial in 1837 in the vault beneath. Um, in other words, there was a vault. There's one piece of the original surviving church in the guts of the church, oh. dedicated to a certain Henry Hollier of Hagley from the county of Worcestershire. It's likely that um, the Hagley family may have had estates, like the Romleys had Barry as an estate. Um, the Hagleys may have had um, some houses or whatever in this neck of the woods. Um, and his vault is actually under the church. So Henry Hollier from Worcestershire. 
the oldest epitaphs the, the, um, on the wall, the epitaphs on the wall, you know, the mounted ones usually of marble or whatever, um, or, or basically epitaphs in the graveyard, uh, the oldest um, that we do find date to um, 1828. Except this is actually wrong. I made the same mistake in my research because we've got an earlier one um, from 18. Um, hang on a minute. We, we do have an earlier one, don't we? We did this earlier on. Um, we do. We do have um, 1828, and I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure we had an earlier one. I'm sure we did. Um, as I was reading through this, uh, yes, yeah, so we've got eight, David uh, Thomas 18. Um, Thomas David, that's what a mistake I made. Thomas David, 1828. Um, we got John Hawker, 1828. And I'm sure we had an earlier one. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, his epitaph, um, Thomas David, um, his epitaph basically said um, in June 1828, though borrowed winds and Neptune's wave have tossed me to and fro, Yet now at last my God's decree I harbour here below. Oh. But now at, at anchor here I lie with many my fleet. But once again I must set sail our saviour Christ to meet. That's nice, isn't it? it is We're liking lovely. that one. That is, that, that is another one. And He's obviously actually, a sailor. Obviously a sailor. But, but actually, do you, know, do you know this list? There's an epitaph which is not obviously... A, a gravestone uh, there's no. an epitaph to to um this is this is another one which isn't in the list it's a it's a, a gunner gunan oh. um who died by accident at lavenock for the 7th of august 1916 a good gunner so it's oh. written so what i'd like to do is um i'd like to think uh, about the the place name um, of Lavenock, and I would like then to think about the carved stones. And by the way, none of this you will find on the internet, so don't even look. I think this is lovely. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's bloody lovely as well, and we could do more of this. Um, you know, I, I, I actually there's there's a, another one. Um, we might be doing similarly next week, but I'm not going to tell you which one it is yet. Um, so, um, right. The name, the name. And, and um, I love this image in front of us, thanks to uh, um, Ruth. Oh, no, sorry, Kate. Um, even the origin of the name Lavenock is obscure. Right. Now, the one I've used in, in, my, in my article in the Barry, Barron District was biased. I, only, only bas I basically said there's loads of meanings for Lavenock, but I used one, right? the association with the poem by Saunders Lewis. And we'll talk about it in a sec. Etymologists have suggested that the name might be Scandinavian. They've suggested that the name might have an, a Welsh origin. Llanhwenog, Llanhwenog, Llanhwenog means a place where older trees grow. Older, A-L, not elder, older. Now for me, I'm, probably thinking that's unlikely that we've got older that close to the coast. However, there's also another Welsh translation, Llan Hrynog, Llan Hrynog, or Llai Hrynog. Get your, get your tongue around that. Llai Hrynog, without the end. Llai Hrynog, which basically means a place frequented by foxes, which might, that's an interesting one for me because We've got the, the legend about the fox of Porth Kerry. Why is there a fox in Porth Kerry? Now, Llythrynog might be the place frequented by the fox. Now, there's two Welsh ones, maybe Old Welsh and maybe for fairly modern. Um, now, the one that I went for is um, 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 Frank, 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 um and um, um, Erfnur. Um, which could actually translate to Lark Hill. Oh. Um, in Old English, which would come derived from Scandinavian, which means Lark Hill, or um, which could be from the Gaelic. So this, that, that directly links to um, Saunders Lewis's mention of the Lark twice in a poem. He mentions the Lark twice. So that might be that might be a direct link to which is the Lark Hill. So there's a there's another 
<laughs> so, so what I did, I stopped my article in the Barron District and, and didn't go on to talk about the rest because it, um, as you know, when people are writing articles in the newspaper and they've got to do a hundred word piece, they've got to cut a load of stuff out and it means something else, right? Um, so um, I used it to link with Saunders Lewis's poem, right? And then I, I then went a little bit further um, and linked in in my piece with with Barry and Sully. And I basically said people moving into Barry and became the owners of the landscape, took their name from the local landscape, i.e. the place name of Frank takes its name from Lark Hill. Um, Barry Bar takes its name from a hillock, Barry Island, if you want to go with that. And Sully, uh, the D. Sully of, or, or Sully or Southley, um, Southfield or whatever you want to do. So I, I, I basically did use that in my article in the Barron District this week, which is coming out tomorrow. But I didn't do this. And I'm not apologising for that because I can't do, they, I've, I've been chastised for having 800 word pieces and Richard knows the effects of my 800 word pieces. They, they take so much out that what you're reading is not what I wrote. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so, so the other meaning, the dedication of the church is to St. Lawrence, um, as in San Florens, San Florens um, and early forms of this are, um, Slavarans and Slavrons, Slavrons, uh, which would Slavrons, uh, which would come from the French. The English or Nuch, Nuch, Krich, Krich, that's right, Krich, uh, from the Irish Krich. Um, don't ask me to repeat this. Could have been added to St. Lawrence's Hill or Headland. So there's something about the hill in yeah. some of these translations. Um, but the Local pronounce, pronunciation has been Hlanoch, not Lavanoch, or Hlanog, presumably from the Welsh Hlanog. So in other words, guys, right, we don't have a clue. <laughs> so in other words, and if you if you want to chuck in a few other things, that's like 10 mm -hmm. different meanings. So if you want to go to, um, 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 oh God, um, Trelik or Treleg or Trelik, um, in Monmouthshire, you've got ten different, you've got twenty different meanings and stuff, all the same place. Mm -hmm. It's similar, similar. There you go. So, oh, back to the name, back to the name, Saint Lawrence. This will interest them. Saint Lawrence dedications are rare in Wales, if that's the one we go with. So, in other words, we've got to go back a little bit and think about Saint Barak with Bar. The name Barak takes its name from the original Bar. Um, hill, St. Barak, taking oh. its name from the hill rather than a person. Peter, oh. there's lots of different things. Um, are you okay, Pete? Yeah, I've done a knock on the door. All right. Oh. Notice the incidents of Lawrence dedication south of Bristol Channel. There are St. Lawrence churches at Westbury, Sub Mendip, East Harptree, Stanton Prior, um, a place called Road, Clyden. Um, Pocklington, Wick, and Priddy. Never heard of any of these, but there's a St. Lawrence's. But, I, but I've been able to trace no connection with the um, St. Augustine canons. Now, apparently, again, we, well, I think we opened, we mentioned the canons of St. Augustine's. I don't think we did, actually. Could have been the founders of the original church associated with St. Augustine um, coming into the Rani Bay. To add to the puzzle, one of the parish registers is inscribed St. Lawrence and All Saints Lavenock. Bugger. So, uh, in other words, that comes in with the with the sainthood of a number of saints being located with the um, locality. Um, it is said that the quantity of human remains found under and near the, the existing church indicates something very different going on. Mm -hmm. um, the location of ancient yeah. battles um, um, and in the 1300s the church was said to have been desecrated by the shedding of blood but then again oh. if I want to go deeper into that when you have 
um, bubonic plague, your skin sheds. Um, being a harbour there in 1349, the population would have been wiped out by plague. That's me adding to the story. The wreckers of Lavanoc may have added their toll, and until recent times, a large cave east of Lavanoc Point was believed to have been the place where wreckers hid their spoil. Well, I don't go with caves along the coast because if you have one <laughs> high tide, all your, all your booties washed away. Another legend unsubstantiated is that St. Lawrence was twice burned and reburied. Uh, the text of the sermon at the latest rededication being, the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, but, it's, but, it's a Bible. Well, it's a biblical quotation. Tell us what that means. The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. Stone. What does that mean? The yeah, it becomes the cornerstone because that's the strongest stone. It becomes the strongest stone. They okay. they rejected it, but they they've used it. Um, you know, someone who's rejected. It's like Jesus was rejected, but he became you know, the cornerstone of the Christian faith. Like he was crucified, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, uh, yes, he was. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. you know, that's what it's about, you know, the stone that was rejected. Because it, it, in the builder's term, if they reject a stone, they, they you know, it's no use. But, but he was of use because he was burnt twice um, yeah, and St. Um, Lawrence. <laughs> um, St. Lawrence was. Yes, he was on a griddle. I think they put him on a griddle in Rome. Well, let's, in Rome. Yeah, let's, move, let's, let's move on, Anne. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we haven't got much time now. Right, so basically, the application of the text is appropriate for Lavanoff. One remaining link with the past, the distant past, is the pair of inscribed stones embedded at the northeast and southeast corners of the chancel. It's these stones. Now, I've got to be honest with you, the sketches are not the best and they're not mine. Um, and it's said that Mrs. Fitzgerald, who for many years lived next to the church, remembered coming to Lavanoc as a bride and being shown the stones by the then rector, who judged them to be Celtic, the remains of an earlier church on the site. Mm. Now, basically, the dates of these are probably high medieval rather than mm. anything earlier. Modern archaeologists doubt that. Um, they consider the North Stone. Now, this is the North Stone, uh, where you've got the remains of um, trefoiled headed crosses um, um, to be medieval, probably to the 1200s. Uh, the South Stone, which is this, is even more puzzling, a complicated design of crosses growing from trefoil heads, the hint of another series towards the base and two deeply incised diagonal strokes looking like an attempt to deface the whole. Now, there's a history with this and actually we're coming to very much the end of this lecture, right? But, yes, and we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna mention this now. Oh. Um, so, so looking at this, the South Stone is even more puzzling, complicated design of crosses growing from profiled heads, the hint of another series towards the face. Talking about that defacing. Mm. Arthur Richard, a local um, ecclesiastical expert, describes the stone thus. And this is in 1962. So surely we could have had a better sketch than this mm. um but i i've never seen this I, i've no i i other than a couple of days ago researching this i had no idea wow. this existed so here we go Let, let's see what this says that from uh, arthur richard the triple crosses seem to be variants of the so-called calvary crosses though the lateral one springs from the arms and not from the stepped base the left cross seems to have a double arm 
The terminals of the head and arms of the main cross are highly stylized and asymmetrical. The biggest problem is when you're reading this, I'm still trying to work out which is which. Indeed, the whole work is crude. Yeah, we'll agree with that. Basic. The whole half of the main shaft, which is the one in the middle, by the looks of it, um, in width from the upper and the arm to the right of the one of the lateral crosses is wider than the other. Um, the diagonal lines can hardly have formed part of the original design. I hesitate to assign any specific date to the monument. It is obviously late and cannot be earlier than the 1400s. It may be as date as the 1600s. But for me, this itself is, is part of the original history of the church, which we've now lost. We've lost everything else. And this is part of the original, the original church itself. And Kate, um, you need to stay on afterwards because I need to have a chat with you about, uh, about the um, cricket results. Um, crosses in which each arm separate into three are to be found at Lamblethian um, and Rutland, the county of Rutland. And again, I, I'm not aware of any of this, but the nearest I have seen to the Lavenock South Cross is carved on a stone, presumably marking a grave in a niche to the north of the ruined chancel of Lantoni Abbey, also a foundation of the Augustinian canons. So Lantoni mm. Abbey. Okay. Now that's in 1962. Yeah. I'm gonna go blonde now. Um, oh yeah, I've, I think I've seen it. I think I know the stone. It's there, I've got it in my head. I think I know the stone, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I think I think the writer's right, yeah. And Antonio Abbey. Um, and one final thing I'm gonna say, one final thing I'm gonna say is, I think I might go down I think I might go down memory lane. Do you mind me going down memory lane, guys? Let's just go down memory lane. Um, let's just let's just go down memory lane. I, I, I some of my fondest memories in the world are being a volunteer at Cosmaster Manual Village. In fact, they they were some of the nicest memories I've got in my life. Yeah. And we used to talk about Lavenor Church, and I'm going to mention a little bit of what I've got in front of me. The parish of Lavenock comprised the Norman manor of Cosmeston. I'm going to say in brackets, so we're told, because I believe that Lavenock was a separate church and a separate um, living, but I could be wrong. Um, the no part of the Norman manor of Cosmeston, known variously as um, Coston, Constanteston, um, after the first Lord. Gilbert de Constantine, who held his land from Fitzsamon, so he's a sub-lord. The family, the family came from um, the um, Cotetin Peninsula in Normandy, and over the years their name was anglicised to Constantine. A manor account of the 1400s mentions a dovecote, a tower, and a manorial hall that was in ruins by 1438. A series of excavations um, undertaken at Cosmeston, which I, I was actually part of, revealed what we've just described as a dovecote and a manorial hall. And then, then we talk about it was a busy community with its fortified manor house, the dwellings of the tenant farmers with a bakehouse and kiln, and possibly a mill and fish pond surrounded by the open fields farmed in strips. The family was, the village was abandoned sometime in the middle part of the 1300s. There we go. 1349. And, and I tell you what, the Gamonga Grant Archaeological Trust were, were great publicists and they got a lot of money when they put a headline in the newspaper in 1984. Uh, plague burials due to be found at Cosmeston. I flocked there because I wanted to dig a plague burial. Um, and we never found the plague burials, but, but, um, you know, or it may have failed because of economic failure. The, the Glamorgan Grant Archaeological Trust, this is when I talk fondly of the Glamorgan Grant Archaeological Trust. They did a brilliant job at Cosmeston. Um, and it was the way that they were treated at Cosmeston led to the Glamorgan Grant Archaeological Trust becoming not the organisation that they once were. And finally, the reason why, uh, let's not be negative. I love my days at Cosmeston. Thanks to the Gamora Grant Archaeological Trust and what we did there in the 80s. Um, so one thing I'm going to finally mention is the link with Lavenock 
there is no trace of a church at Cosmaston. And as it lay within the parish, the priest at St. Lawrence, known in the 1300s as the Chapel of Cosmaston, would have, would have ministered to this and to another lost village adjoining the church to the west. Now, I think that, that the lost village that they refer to is actually the original village of Lavenock. And it may have been, you know, when you look at maps, it says Barry with Porth Kerry or Penarth with Barry, that type of thing, or Cum uh -huh. you know, that type of thing, right? That's what we're talking about. There may have been a little chapel at Cosmaston. This is what we believe. This is what I believe. There was a chapel at Cosmaston. Uh, this was a side chapel to Lavenock and whatever. Just move on. Um, all else in those villages fell into ruin, but successive church buildings carried on in the Christian tradition at Lavenock. But other than that, we don't know any more. And that's where we're going to finish today. Um, I, I've, I, I've enjoyed that. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's been a bit of a blast. Um, there's a little bit more sort of research history about Lavenock and sort of a little bit more about the landscape but we won't do that now because it takes us away from the mystery of the church um, and that's where we'll call it a day so um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to leave this image on a moment and we're going to and then we're going to take it off after we've asked and have you got any questions Oh, I was just uh, obviously thinking that um, the early church must have been Catholic and, yep. um, or, you know, early Christian. And, um, yeah, it would have been Catholic because of the Normans. And um, then it was Anglican. So Yes, eventually, eventually, exactly. Yeah, so eventually. it's been Anglican since, you know, the 15th century. 16th century um the dissolution of the monasteries by at least 1540 yeah yeah anyway thank you for that Anne. what we're going to do we're going to take take this off and we're going to go with kate as i'm as i'm trying to work out my life uh kate anything you'd like to say yeah, sorry. no sorry we lost her voice so maybe you know it's like anyway right Kate, I'm gonna have a chat. I'm gonna have a chat with uh, Kate offline, anyway. So, yeah. right, anyway, nothing from Kate. A minute. So, let's ask uh, Peter. Anything you'd like to ask, Pete? Uh, um, Cogan Chapel. Is that to do with um, the Cosmaston? No, no. no Co Co Cogan Hall Farm um, is basically Cogan Hall Farm and Cogan Church, which is Saint Peter's Church, which is down mm -hmm. down the lane, back lane. Uh, that then leads leads at the back of Kogan, so it's a different place. Okay. That that goes from that goes from the back of Sully, um, through to um, the the Sully Hall there as well. Uh, but you just go, instead of going south towards the South Road, you go north, and that lake takes you through to the back lanes. And there's a turning shaft there that takes you to the church. It's usually open, and if you mention okay. me, you'll get into the church. And that's actually where you can mention me or, or Richard. Mention me or Richard because we redid the history of the church. So there we go. So, um, right. I've been there and, with and, you, I think. But yeah. You didn't go there that day that um, we went scrumping apples and we started feeding the pigs. And um, yeah. as Barbara. Yes, and, I did. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> nearly got me into trouble because the woman next door, Tina, she came up to me. She said, um, you know, idiots feed pigs. Um apples occasionally right um and when they do the pigs get pissed at which point i <laughs> i tailed out there because the pigs were staggering around and it was my gang including me that fed the pigs apples of course they eat apples. Apples. <laughs> yeah they do eat they're not supposed to eat our apples because they were pissed they were staggering <laughs> around i don't believe it they were honestly oh well, yeah, they, they, they love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're good for them, but it makes them drunk. Oh, yeah. Remember, biologically, pigs are similar to human beings. <laughs> so they, they, they do get some. So, We've so, got to ferment, you know. We've got to ferment. I suppose well, no, they're, 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 enough, they were, we were sending them right. apples. They were gone off apples. They were already fermented. Oh, right. Right. right so, okay. Talking about fermenting, anything you'd like to say, um, Richard? Yeah, no, it seems to follow all the 
all the other churches where they sort of been renovated in the sort of early 1830s, 1840s, yeah. 1850s. Yeah. They all follow the same sort of, they follow the pattern of the church that was there before to an extent. Mm. And they bring on all this Gothic crap sort of to them, which wasn't there before. The, the, the problem is, the problem is, it, it, it's as I usually say, this was usually my, my cat's phrase, the Victorians used to drag the churches back to the nakedness of Christ. So what they would do, they would rip out all the plaster and render internally and externally. Um, and then the churches would be cold inside. And then they'd have to rip up the inside of the churches to put central heating in. So, you know, if, if you did have an original medieval fabric church, um, the 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 renders didn't survive, you know, it was a bit of a, a bit of a game, really. Um, right. So, OK, then let, let's let's just um, see if there's anything from um, Kathy before we call it a day. No, thanks. I, I didn't know it was there, so I'll be going to have a look at it. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah very pretty and you know, all very interesting. It is pretty. It's all there are trees around it now. Yeah. Oh. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's just an interesting little spot because um, um, Kate went up there to take some photos. Right. So um, if there's nothing else, obviously we'll be doing this next week, um, eleven o'clock next week. Um, um, I gotta have a chat, quick chat with Kate uh, after this. Anyone interested in my Mondays here or no? Well, no? I can't afford three. <laughs> mm. I drop one and after Mon no Monday's not a very good. Oh no, you gotta keep Monday. No, Anne, you can't. You gotta you gotta keep doing what you're doing, so you're not dropping right. anything, Anne. So don't worry, okay. don't worry. Kate's got loads <laughs> of money. She'll pay for you to do it. Right, I okay then. Um, I what that means. Right. Right, okay, okay then. Okay. Anyone else anyone else got anything to say before um I sign you all off and have a quick chat with Kate? No. Oh, nice to see everybody. How did he do Lee? Yes, it was yeah. lovely. And we'll see each other soon. Yeah. We'll, see, we'll okay. see each other, we'll see each other next Wednesday. So what all I'm gonna right. do, I'm gonna say goodbye now to Peter, um, Kathy, Bye. Anne, uh, Richard. Hang on, Kate, and I'll and I'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Hi Where Richard, you? nice to see you Richard. Uh, <laughs> nice to see you. Nice. Bye bye. Bye bye. So long. Bye -bye. So long. So long. Turn you off. Oh, oh there, 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 there. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm just looking in the chat box a minute. Right. Nothing there. I'm going to say to people online, don't forget to like and subscribe for those that have been watching. If there's any questions, put them in now. I can answer them. Um, I'm going to go offline now. If anyone would like to sub, like and subscribe, join. Join. The join button's good. Helps, helps to pay for my, um, my goat's milk. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much for watching on YouTube. I'm going to sign off now on three, two, one. Any questions? I've got to go. Take care. Right. That's that. So live. I've got to put live off. Hang on. I'm having a blonde moment.